Oh boy, there are some truly annoying things in Adobe Illustrator, but I'm going to help you with some of these workarounds in today's video. And that starts right here with text and deselecting off of it. Now, typically we would actually press V to select away from things, but you cannot do that with text because it just gives you a V. So instead, just simply hold down command on a Mac or control on a PC, and then just click away from your text. You can then hit V or whatever you want to use in terms of tools. For me, this just feels a lot easier and a lot quicker than coming over to the toolbar itself. Now, the next issue is something I'm sure you have experienced before in your graphic design workflows. So that problem I'm sure you've experienced goes a little something like this. You make a new shape in Illustrator and then blammo, the transform window just opens up. This happens every single time you make a new shape and it's highly, highly annoying. To solve this problem, simply come into the menu here and uncheck the show on shape creation button. So now whenever you make a new shape, you won't have the headache of having to close this window over and over again. And as a designer, that feels pretty damn good. Learn more about the awesome workflow tool Millinote later in today's video, and also how to sign up for free with a no time limit period attached. Now again, I have some text right here, and let's say on this design, I want my text to be the exact same size as this circle. We could outline the text or whatever else, but to remain non-destructive, let's first head into the properties panel for this circle, and we're gonna copy the height with command or control C. Great, now we need to press command or control T to open up the characters panel and navigate over to the corner menu. We want to open up the height settings panel. And as you can see in the drop down menu, we have several different options open to us. Now the A on my Astro is an uppercase letter. So I'm going to use the select cap height option. We can then paste in the measurements, excluding the letters of course, and hit enter. So now my A will actually be the exact same size as my shape. Now you might notice that some of the letters won't be the exact same height, but most of them will be. Also, of course, we cannot forget about entering into the preferences settings menu with command or control K. And then make sure our glyph smart guides are in fact activated. And by default, these things are green. But what they do is they allow you to align objects with topography, even though your topography isn't outlined. Instead of Illustrator trying to match an object to the letter bounding box, I can actually align things to the character itself without outlining it. This can help us match anything to our text size as well. And that helps those who don't want to mess around with numbers and copying or paste like we just saw. And here's a super annoying problem that's pretty easy to fix. But guess what? It hasn't been fixed. In Illustrator, if you want to play around with the transparency settings on a design, you have to come into the menu and then just click one by one to see how it's going to look on your artwork. This takes time and it's quite annoying to be honest. But if we move over to Photoshop, and as I'm probably sure you're all too aware of, we can actually just hop into the layers panel and scroll through the blend modes with ease. I really don't understand why Adobe hasn't added something similar into Illustrator, but I will actually forgive Adobe due to the next thing in today's video. Let's say I'm just happily working away on my design right here. And at some point I want to head back in time to revisit a specific part of the process or simply to undo something I did incorrectly. Command or control Z, right? Not anymore with the newest Illustrator update. We now have a handy history panel, which we can literally scroll over and jump to any point in my design process. That's within reason though, of course we can change how many steps we track backwards up to a cap of 250. This is a huge improvement because I don't have to keep smashing that command Z key 200 times a minute. Now here's something I'm sure has bugged you even a wee little bit. So you're working away in Adobe Illustrator and you come over to the toolbar to select something. Maybe even you just wanna hold down a selection on a tool. But what keeps happening is these tips appear all over the place. You think to yourself, hey, I'm not a beginner anymore, so why is Adobe suggesting these things to me? Well, it's because you have a certain setting activated. Press a command or control K, and that's gonna bring up the Illustrator Preferences window, and then head into the General section. Here, we want to turn off the rich tool tips. 
Now you might want to keep these standard tooltips activated because they can be helpful and they're not as invasive as the rich tooltips. The next example makes use of some random logo type thrown together and it's not an actual design, just so you know. But it does show a problem that you might encounter with your logo design workflow. This text box is so large that it takes over the entire logo type from the bottom. I can't select it because it's just in the way and overcrowding it. But if I come into the Illustrator Preference settings, we can click the option where we only select text by the baseline. And this means that we can navigate our design so much easier just by selecting the baseline of the logo type. And some people, for whatever reason, find their center points have disappeared. And it's often because this setting has been changed somewhere along the lines. So on the design, I have two center points, one for the large square and another one for the center of the smaller shape at the bottom where it was originally a square before I cut it out. And the bottom left segment is in fact cut into the larger square. So let's head into the outline mode with command or control Y and we can make use of these center points. So again, I'm gonna use the group selection tool and I can actually click the smaller shape of the compound path and then press R for the rotate tool. Notice how it snapped to that center point, and this means I can actually hold down the Alt Option key and then click the center, allowing me to perform precise rotations. Now, a huge part of logo designing, in my opinion, is being precise and very neat. And working in the way I'm demonstrating today in this video really does help with that. So I can also rotate the smaller shape in relation to the larger square. And remember, this is actually a compound path. So yeah, I could actually just rotate the entire design to gain the same outcome here. But I'm just demonstrating to show you the kind of things possible with rotation within a compound shape. Here's something else that Photoshop does really correctly, and yet Illustrator is still playing catch up. In Photoshop, if we're working on something and we want to shift the canvas around, kind of like if you're sketching on paper in real life and you want to turn the paper to change your perspective, we can either take the crop tool and literally just turn the canvas around like so, or we can actually grab the aptly named rotate view tool. And this does exactly what you think it would do, it rotates your view. But then if we come back into Illustrator, we literally cannot do anything like this. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But if you're someone who works on digital art, for example, and you use brushes and other things in AI, it might be highly useful if you can actually flip the canvas around or the artboard around. So today's video is sponsored by Melanote. Now I've been a firm advocate of Melanote for three years. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you will know that Melanote is a bit different to traditional software. Now it's more like working on the wall, so to speak, in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, collect all of your ideas and inspiration in one convenient place. And it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or your clients in real time. So I've been using Milanote for the past three years to keep my creative projects organized. And this awesome tool is available for free with no time limit. So if you haven't done already, Sign up for free using the link in the description box below and start to streamline your graphic design workflow today. But hey, if you want to learn more useful things about Adobe Illustrator, just click a video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.